Hi, my name's Eric. Welcome back to my channel. Let's talk about Star Kid. Before I dive right in and tell the story of this talented group of theater artists, if you're a fan of Star Kid, comment below your favorite moment from any Star Kid musical. Our story begins in 2009 at the University of Michigan, where Darren, Chris, Brian Holden, Matt Lang, and Nick Lang put on a little musical theater production called A Very Potter Musical. This parody of the Harry Potter series of books and films was put on by Basement Arts, Michigan's student-run theater organization, for an audience of just 200 people. One of the just four performances of this show was recorded and posted to YouTube, where the no-budget production went viral and launched Star Kid to recognition beyond the walls of the University of Michigan. In the 10 years since their founding, this lively and pop culture savvy group of theater artists, both performers and behind the scenes workers, such as directors, writers, choreographers, designers, and composers, most of whom came from the performing arts departments at the University of Michigan, have gone on to create a variety of hilarious musicals, web series, successful cast recordings, and tours, garnering hundreds of millions of views on their YouTube channel. I'm first going to run through the 11 official musicals written, produced, and shared by StarKid. And then I'll go into a bit more detail about some of the key players in the Star Kid cast. And just as a note, all of these musicals were co-written by Matt and Nick Lang, with Brian Holden co-writing the books for many of the early musicals, Darren Chris and AJ Holmes writing the music and lyrics for a lot of the early musicals, and Jeff Blim co-writing and composing many of the more recent shows. So those are just the most common contributors to the writing of these musicals. Of course, the first Star Kid musical production was a very Potter musical from 2009, a parody of multiple installments of the Harry Potter series of books and films with a variety of very 2009 pop culture references. Come on, let's go watch Wizards of Waverly Place. Later in 2009, Star Kid produced Me and My Dick, the coming of age story of Joey Richter and his best friend, you guessed it, his penis. <laughs> the cast recording became the first ever student musical to chart on Billboard, which is quite the accomplishment for Star Kid, for Joey, and for his penis. Getting a boner while my doctor is giving me the cough test is not right. <laughs> In 2010, Star Kid followed a very Potter musical with a very Potter sequel. As you can expect, it follows the events of a very Potter musical with further hilarity and memorable performances from Darren Chris as Harry Potter and Lauren Lopez as Draco Malfoy. <laughs> StarKid's 2011 production was called Starship, and it was the first StarKid musical not to feature Darren Criss, as he was starring in Glee at the time. There are even jokes in the musical about it. Damn that GLEE! -E. They're always making twisted abominations of everything! <laughs> In 2012, StarKid again produced two musicals. The first was Holy Musical Batman, with an at sign in the title, presumably for copyright reasons. In the musical, Batman and Robin come face to face with all of their iconic villains, as well as longtime frenemy Superman. It ends tonight, Batman. Or should I say, Butthead. The second StarKid production of 2012 was the final existing installment of the Harry Potter musical series, A Very Potter Senior Year. It was actually performed at LeakyCon, the Harry Potter fan convention, as a reading rather than a full production. And it featured Ivana Lynch as Luna Lovegood, her actual character from the movies. Department of Mysteries, isn't it wonderful? All the world's most mysterious and magical anomalies in one booby trap labyrinth? This is especially delightful to me because Luna is probably my favorite Harry Potter character. In 2013, StarKid produced Twisted, a parody of Disney's Aladdin, but it brings together characters from multiple different Disney movies, including Beauty and the Beast, 101 Dalmatians, and Peter Pan. The musical pokes fun at the tropes of Disney movies, defaulting to profanity and sexual humor to subvert our understanding of Disney movies as family-friendly and squeaky clean. Why does the sun go down at night? StarKid also produced two musicals in 2014, the first of which was The Trail to Oregon, an interactive musical based on the computer game The Oregon Trail, where the audience could choose the names of the main characters. Well, 
well, we're not gonna get very far as a bunch of farmers. <laughs> The second musical that Star Kid produced in 2014 was Annie, a parody of Star Wars. The cast recording of Annie charted at number four on the Billboard Comedy Albums chart. Why don't you ask me where I got my new cape? Uh, where did you? At the Darth Maul. Mm. In 2016, we got Firebringer, the story of early humans discovering fire, among other things. To my knowledge, it was the first Star Kid musical production that didn't directly reference or parody any other existing properties and was entirely an original story. Firebringer spawned this viral clip, which was actually how I found Star Kid just a few months ago. I don't really wanna do the work today. I don't really wanna do the work today. I don't really wanna do the work today. I don't wanna do the work today. And finally, in 2018, Starkid produced The Guy Who Didn't Like Musicals, a horror comedy about a disease that takes over the minds of the residents of Hatchetfield and causes them to act like characters in a musical. We have traveled across seas of stars, conquering, conquering, wait. What are we saying? The upcoming Star Kids show is called Black Friday, and it's also set to take place in Hatchetfield. This is exciting because Star Kid are basically creating their own theatrical universe, in which they can explore themes of religion, mob mentality, consumerism, and finding humanity in inhumane circumstances. With all that in mind, let's take a look at some of Star Kid's most popular individual cast members and some of my personal favorite roles that they performed. First, of course, is founding member Darren Chris, who played Harry Potter in all three Potter musicals. Don't, don't you think it could uh, make a girl fall in love with me? Oh, I think it already has. <laughs> awesome, because it's for Cho Chang. <laughs> Brian Holden is another founding member of Star Kid, and he played Superman in Holy Musical Batman and Smelly Balls in Firebringer. Because no one thought to tell her the truth. Yeah, I mean, it's like, do my balls even smell? Yes. Oh, yes. Okay, yes. come on. Lauren Lopez has been in almost every Star Kids show, most notably as Draco Malfoy in the Potter musicals, The Sun in The Trail to Oregon, Zazalil in Firebringer, and Emma in The Guy Who Didn't Like Musicals. She's one of the most recognizable members of Star Kid, and she always gives her characters a great, fun, plucky, and endearingly sarcastic personality. Uh, just explain to me what that is, though. Just start from the beginning. Assume I know nothing. Here. Figure it out. Okay. No, 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 my God! Joey Richter roomed with Darren Criss during college, and he played Ron in the Harry Potter musicals, himself in Me and My Dick, McDoon, who makes the ladies McSwoon, among other characters in The Trail to Oregon, Grunt in Firebringer, and a bunch of characters in The Guy Who Didn't Like Musicals. He's been a key player in Star Kid since the very beginning. Ah! You didn't invite me! Jesus, Ted! <laughs> Jeff Blim played Aragog in A Very Potter Senior Year and Aladdin in Twisted. And he wrote and starred in The Trail to Oregon and The Guy Who Didn't Like Musicals. He really knows how to write parts that bring out his and his castmates' strengths, particularly his ability to portray unhinged and dynamic characters with dramatic emotional highs and lows. Recognize your timepiece with mine? Oh, okay. Is that an iPhone? Yeah, it's 6S. I've had. <laughs> Wear a watch! Joe Walker most notably played Voldemort and Dolores Umbridge in the Harry Potter musicals, Dick in Me and My Dick, Batman in Holy Musical Batman, and finally Ducker in Firebringer. I do not pee pee sitting down! Hmm? I never did it! And the one time that maybe you heard about, it was because the gravity was on too high! All right, so you try me be standing up when the gravity is on three times too high. Rachel Soglin played a princess in Twisted, Mother in The Trail to Oregon, and Emberly in Firebringer. There is an impressive amount of range between these different characters. In fact, I didn't even recognize her between The Trail to Oregon and Firebringer. You know, uh, 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 Aladdin? Yes, Aladdin! <laughs> the name that will forever be burned into my soul. Cory Doris played Grandpa, and Cletus Jones, who has killed three people in The Trail to Oregon, and Bill in The Guy Who Didn't Like Musicals. Even in supporting roles, he makes his hilarious one-liners very memorable with his endearing and often hapless characters. Be any kind of crustacean. Crabs, 
Goats? <laughs> Jamie Lynn Beatty played Ginny and Rita Skeeter in the Harry Potter musicals, Poison Ivy in Holy Musical Batman, Daughter in The Trail to Oregon, Schlupsy in Firebringer, and Charlotte in The Guy Who Didn't Like Musicals. She often plays irreverent and clueless characters, but is known for her impressive vocal performances. Today! Meredith Stapien not only co-wrote and starred as Jamila in Firebringer, but also played Hermione in A Very Potter Senior Year and Mega Girl in Starship. Well, 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 look who was wrong. You know, for a while I thought it was me, but I feel so vindicated seeing that it was actually you. Aww. Dylan Saunders is remembered for his amazing operatic voice as Dumbledore in the Harry Potter musicals, Tootsie Noodles in Starship, and Jafar in Twisted. The people will cheer for the royal vizier. Robert Mannion's most prominent role has been as Professor Hidgens and other characters in The Guy Who Didn't Like Musicals, where he performed a show-stopping number. A show-stopping number. A real showstopper, an aria to rule them all. A new rising star of Star Kid is Mariah Rose Faith, who captured fans' attention as her various characters in The Guy Who Didn't Like Musicals. La -da -da -da. So that's pretty much the full story for now. I cannot wait to see Black Friday and what Star Kid does in the future. If you'd like me to talk more about Star Kid or about musical theater in general, let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for being here, and until next time, that's it. This is humanity's 11th hour.